I could give an example. They're like the Wahhabists of. Uh, I give an example of the when, what, what they meant by going like, off the, uh, off the off the off the and off the. Example, they say classical Protestant teaching from 500 years ago is that you are saved by your faith alone and nothing else. So no matter what good you do, Wait, like, that's, what the, that's what the Protestants say. That's a general classical Protestant position. And the second key thing for Protestants is the Bible is your sole authority. Okay. No church is your authority, no Pope, right? Oh, that is interesting. That is very interesting. Cause, sorry, okay. I, I don't want me to interrupt. No, no. But because that, that ties into what we've... Um, we have a verse in the Quran that Allah says... Um, essentially, there's a verse that talks about how the Jews and the Christians started taking... Uh, they, they started taking their religious authorities as gods beside okay. the one true God. That they, they essentially started doing uh, polytheism because they started taking right. their their uh, priests and so on. Um, and there's a, I think there was uh, there's a hadith which talks about it as well because there's a, there was a Christian who became Muslim at the time, and he said to Muhammad when he, that when that verse was revealed, peace be upon him, he said to him, "We didn't used to do that. We didn't used to take our uh, you know them as gods." And he said, "Did you obey them in, 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 in what was right and what was wrong? Did they set the standard for like, you know, um, did, did you essentially take them as arbiters?" Um, and he said, "And they said yes." And he said, "That's the way in which you worship them." So this is this is something that obviously like it touches on. Uh, I have absolutely no doubt that the Quran, from my point of view, which is a different point of view than from yours, yeah. reflects um, the, the Christianity at the time of Muhammad, sixth yeah. century A.D because the religion, Christianity then, yeah. was not Protestantism, not born again Christianity, it was yeah. Catholicism, because that was the religion of the Byzantine Empire, yeah. which was the empire on the borders of Arabia. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that things that you just said will crop up in dialogues. Yeah, yeah. Um, nonetheless, they say that we in saying that you're saved, that you're not just saved by your faith, but you have to do good things. Ah, that's interesting. Not that, so just by your faith. That's, that's right. Good. That's good. That's, that's what we believe as well. We believe that okay. works and faith. Okay. Not not just one or the other. Okay. So you have to have the belief, and you also have to. Uh, you cannot just like the modern Christian Protestant, I guess, idea of like you know, Jesus just died for your sins, and that's it. You don't need to do, you know, or like this this doing away with the law that supposedly Paul did. Um, I, you know, we don't believe in that. We I think the, we the, obviously the point of contact between us and you, because yeah, yeah. we, the Catholic Church teaches that we accept all that's good and true in the no, in the non-Catholic religions. Yeah. That, but we don't. I mean, we do. Say, I mean, we're not departed from them to no, the extent course, that we deny yeah. that Jesus was necessary for our sins. Because if I could do all the good in the world, yeah. help all the little old ladies across the road I could in the world, yeah. I would still be damned yes. to hellfire if Jesus not died on the cross for okay. me. Really? Yes, because. What that, that sacrifice of Jesus does is takes the relationship... Sorry, sorry, before you continue, but, but at the right. same time, you wouldn't say that if, if... The fact that Jesus has died for your sins, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can just do whatever you like and... Spot on. So you, yes, you still have... Can't. So they both work together in tandem. This is it. Yeah. Let, so let me explain about the, the significance of Jesus for us Catholics. And I think for those guys as well, the born-again Christians. Um, Adam, you, you obviously believe in Adam and Eve. We have a different take on it between us, though. But Adam and Eve, um, they sinned, and that breaks a relationship yeah. between God and man at that point. Yeah. And it stays broken. No matter what happens, it stays broken in a fundamental way. <laughs> then Jesus comes, and he, the death on the cross is the ultimate sacrifice which binds man to God once again. Yeah. As if the, the event in the Garden of Eden had not happened. Me and, me and God, you, and any other baptised Catholic and God, being now in one family yeah. that doesn't mean that any child in a family can do what they like yeah, yeah. you can kick your son out if he does wrong start taking drugs and nicking from your mum's purse yeah, yeah. so we've got to do our bit yeah, yeah. in order to remain in god's as family as we try our best yeah and we, and we actually do good work then jesus's sacrifice it's almost yes. like uh, like you know when you're on a, um, on a test and you studied and you worked hard and all this stuff the, the teacher is gonna have if you if you got like um uh, not like just a little bit off the cutoff point for a grade. The teacher's going to be a lot more lenient if he knows that you've actually worked hard. Okay. And he might round up that grade, right? If, if you know. Okay, that's a nice, anal a nice analogy. Yeah. But just to just deal the point you said about why the, the sacrifice of Jesus is so important and why me helping all the little old ladies across the roads in the world wouldn't help me yeah. if he hadn't died on the cross for me is because I've just said how we are now back in God's family as yeah. we see it as Catholics. If I was still, if Christ had not come yet and I'm separated from God, I'm not in his family, I'm like helping all the little old ladies across the road, yeah. but I'm outside God's house, I'm outside the family house. Okay. 
I cannot inherit anything from my father if he's broken his relationship with me. Yeah. So only when he brings me back home and says, yes, you're my son again, you've done all those bad things before, but I've just letting you back well, in the family, then I can inherit when he dies. That's a human analogy. Well, so the, the, it's the, like that. The fact that Jesus Christ died is what brings you back into the family. Absolutely. And then I must keep myself in the family by my behaviour. But can you not be brought back into the family by just turning to God and asking for forgiveness and like stopping from doing those sins? Okay, okay. and that's a lot, what a lot of Muslims have suggested in my time talking to them about this sort of thing. Well, we say no. Not because in principle that's wrong, yeah. but because we say God has arranged what we call the economy of salvation in this way. Right, now, right. obviously from your point of view, he's arranged it in the way you've just described. Yeah, yeah. But for us, we see that that event with Adam and Eve was a fundamental break. It wasn't just Adam. I know in the Quran, Adam committed a sin, then he could be forgiven. Yeah. And things could be like, okay then. Yeah. But for us, it well, isn't like that. Well, um, because that break... That event was like when God said to Adam in the in the in Genesis, He says, "On so the day you did, go on." It wasn't that He co uh, committed a sin and He was forgiven like that. He He was inspired by um, by God to turn because there's two. Obviously, there's uh, Satan committed a sin when he refused to bow down to Adam. Okay. And Adam obviously committed a sin when he ate from the fruit uh, under the tree. But the difference between the two and why um, Adam was forgiven and, and uh, Satan wasn't is that. Satan essentially, out of his arrogance, he refused to accept, uh, and he knew that the power of God. You know, he was a believer in that sense, but he he didn't. Um, he refused to, uh, to uh, repent for his sin, essentially, and to ask for forgiveness. He said, "Look, no, this guy is inferior to me. He's made of clay. I'm made of fire." Whereas Adam, he actually regretted what he did. He turned back to God. He repented. It, obviously, I mean, I, I know. You, I don't know if you, um, you know, I know. You, I, I just want to clarify that obviously that part yeah is no, no fine no good i'm glad you did clarify so yeah um so for, for us the break with adam and eve god says yeah. the day you eat this fruit is the day you die yeah okay so i mean not that you die on that day but you will not death will now be you'll be subject to death right right so it's a it's a fundamental change from the state where adam is not subject to death yeah. to becoming subject to death and because all human beings die after him yeah. we know that that problem remains and so Jesus, though he heals it, it doesn't mean we no longer die, but the death is no longer a fundamental death in that our souls go to God when we die, if we die in the faith, in the ah, Catholic faith. Okay. So this is why the afterlife is essentially out of uh, the sacrifice of Jesus. That yes. we, then, we are resurrected on, on the uh, day of judgment. Yes, before Jesus' death yeah. on the cross, and he took, St. Paul says he took captivity captive. He took those who are captive, all the righteous dead yeah. from before Jesus' time were in what we call the limbo of the fathers, where they're waiting for Jesus for the for the, Wait, the prophesied the limbo sacrifice of the fathers. Limbo Ooh. of the fathers, yeah. For example, Abraham, Moses, ah, Jacob, okay. Isaac. They were all. None of them were in heaven. They were all in this place yeah. because nobody could go to heaven until Jesus opened the gates by rebinding man to God in that family relationship. 